the year of uncertainty continues. It doesn't matter how much you know about football. Yeah. If you've never played fantasy football, I mean, it's like it's a total crapshoot. Yeah. This year. Yeah. I mean, Deshaun Watson, they're, they're going against the Seahawks. He's not going to have that great of a game. Wow. Uh, he had a great game. Yes, he did. And Mr. Will Fuller V, the fifth one, he is he's on fire. I mean. Is there, a, is there a receiver in the league right now that's hotter than Will Fuller? No. No, probably not. And who guessed that? Nobody. 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 <laughs> uh, welcome back. Next episode of Fancy Headliners. Coming at you week nine, waiver wire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't want to, like, you know, drop anybody's expectations, but a lot of these names are the same. Yeah. We've yeah, talked about these names before. Yeah. Not a whole lot of major injuries no. this week. I mean, Zach Miller. Oof. Man. We, we watched that one live and. That was that was tough. Unfortunately, we'd just eaten lunch and just about lost it. Yes. I mean, you know, prayers out to Zach Miller. I mean, there's yes, talks indeed. of him possibly losing his leg. Yeah, I mean, it's bigger than football when it comes to something like that. Yeah, you, you know don't want to I mean? see anything like that. No. I mean, Joe Flacco got severely concussed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he knew he needed to come out of the game the second the hit happened. I mean, he put his finger up and he he knew. Immediately. He knew he was done. Right. And, and it's good. I mean, I think, you know, in years past, a lot of players would have tried to fake it and yeah. get up and keep going. You know, at least they're starting to get a little bit more aware of it now. Yeah. Um, Chris Hogan took a hard hit. Mm-hmm. He's now dealing with shoulder and rib injuries. Man. He's just all banged it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can say, oh, let's turn Danny Amendola. Danny Amendola's always banged up. Yeah, he can't stay He's like there. perma banged up. Yeah. He just He's stays there. in the medical tent. He doesn't even have a spot on the bench. He just goes and sits underneath the blue tent. <laughs> he, he, he's not quite as bad as Jordan Reed, but he's he's close. He's close. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned Jordan Reed. He's yeah, hurt again. He's, uh, of course. Of course he is. <laughs> I mean, he's only been healthy for two weeks. It was about time for another injury. Yeah. Uh, he's got a hamstring injury. I mean, listen, if you got Jordan Reed at this point – He's either buried on your bench mm. or he's almost droppable. Yeah. I wouldn't want him on my team. I don't want to deal with that headache. No, no. I mean, he can't even play a full game, much less, you know, produce for you. Exactly. I uh, got a lot of bye weeks this week, too. Another week of buys. Once again. Some huge studs on bye this week. Mm-hmm. You got the Bears, the Browns. Yeah. Not so many studs there. No. But the Chargers, the Vikings, Patriots, and Steelers. Yep. Uh, they're also off, too, and there's a lot of fantasy studs. So if you you know if you're playing somebody that has you know Gronk or mm-hmm. Tom Brady on. together this week or Le'Veon Bell, yeah, great week exactly. for that matchup. <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah, it's like a partial lottery win. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into the waiver wire. Um, like I said, some of these names we've talked about before, you should know who they are by now. Mm-hmm. If there's somebody you got on your bench that's kind of iffy, pick these guys up. I mean, there's yeah. <laughs> if it's a flyer, it's a flyer. Yeah. I don't know if any of these guys are really must starts. No. Right now, there's not that one guy that you can go out there and use that number one waiver priority on, but there's a few good ones. Yeah, yeah. Who's on the top of your list? Uh, I'm going to go with Mr. Rex Burkhead, you know. And again, we all know how we feel about that whole backfield. Yeah, we don't like it. At all, you know. And I think, you know, Belichick, he loves to mess with us fantasy. People, you know what I'm saying? But Rex Burkhead has been trending in the right direction. You know, he had 68 receptions um, and 15 rushing yards. And I know it was a game flow type of, you know, situation, but I like Rex Burkhead. And he came on last year at this time of year, the later part of the season. So he's somebody that you might want to just keep on, keep an eye on. And also I've been hearing rumors about trade speculations for Deion Lewis. Mm. So if that, if that happens, happens, exactly, then all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more realistic. Exactly, because I mean James White still had a decent day yesterday. He still got his. Yeah, no huge numbers, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean Rex Burkhead is great. He's just not. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you never, never know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> he may be inactive in two weeks. Right, he may not even be on the roster. Yeah, I mean, that, remember uh, it was a Stephen Ridley a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. He put it, put a few back to back games up. Had one fumble and they cut the dude. Yeah. I mean, you just never know. I mean, he's he is he's a great talent. He's he fits Absolutely. their system perfectly. Yeah. But he's kind of just like James White. Well, see, but but I think the intriguing part about him, especially now with 
Hogan possibly being out or maybe missing some time, you know, Rex Burkhead can come in and he they can actually, you know, put him out, at, you know, even in the slot, you know, have him and Amendola. So, you know, he gives you that extra uh, receiving option. Mm-hmm. And then you can have James. So you can actually pay him and uh, White at the same time. Ugh. Yeah. It's but like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a bad taste. Right, right. Just don't right. play him this week since they're on bye. Right, exactly. Yeah, you just pick him up a week early. Just pick him up, but yeah, and just keep him stashed, you know. You know, and, and at the beginning, I told everybody that you couldn't really start anybody this week. Uh-huh. There is somebody you probably could start. Yeah. A lot of people started him last week. Right. I know we put a little post out there before the game started on Thursday. We did. About a certain individual. Yes, indeed. River dancing, he's tap a- dancing, <laughs> whatever he's doing, yeah. ballet dancing. Right. Alex Collins looked really Really good. Yeah, he did. I mean, yes, he wasn't going against the stiffest run D in the league. Right, right, right. But he still had 18 carries for a buck 13, two catches for another 30. Hey, and, and I mean, to their credit, I mean, the Dolphins all like, uh, well, they were. They were. <laughs> yeah, fifth against the run. Yeah. So it's not like they're scrubs. No. Um, but, yeah. He and especially good. if Flacco has to miss any time. Yeah, that's even play. more. They gotta have to lean on the run. Yeah, that's an uptick for Buck Allen a little bit because they'll be doing more checkdowns. Exactly. Alex Collins. I mean, he's by far the best running back. Oh yeah, yeah. No There's doubt. only one thing I want to say about Alex Collins that I don't like. What's that? Danny Woodhead can come back and practice this week. Now he's not. Right. A, he's not a between the tackles running back. Mm-hmm. But that's just another person in the mix. Yeah. They could take away a couple touches. There's no guarantee that Danny Woodhead comes back this week. I don't think he comes back and actually plays till after their bye week in week 11 right. against Green Bay. Mm-hmm. But that's going to be something that eats in, even if it's five or eight carries here or there. I mean, Collins hasn't been overly used as it is. Right, no. He can't afford to lose <laughs> well, no. more than what uh, he's got. My thinking behind it, I think that it would maybe affect Buck more than it would. It will. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Because uh, – this this past game, you know, I think that they really saw what they have in him. You know, the talent. Seattle didn't want to let him go. I don't know why they let him go. <laughs> well, well, he'd be the best back in Seattle right now, too. Now, exactly. I think the whole situation with that was when Chris Carson came along and he was just balling out of control. They should have let Lacey go. <laughs> you know, instead. Did you see? I, I put something on Twitter this week about Lacey. I got, I got a pretty good reaction from him. I told – everybody's like, why is Eddie Lacy still have a job? Mm-hmm. And, I was, and this is how I – this is how I explained it. <laughs> this is so not cor- politically correct. Right. So I'm not trying to offend anybody. <laughs> Eddie Lacy's like the fat chick in a room full of hot chicks. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they're, they're, he's there to make the others just look even better. Right. You know what I mean? Because he's horrible. Yeah. It doesn't matter what – he could come out and rush for three straight 100-yard games. <laughs> It'll be the ugliest 100-yard games you ever saw. Whew. It's just not appealing. No, no, no. He's no, no. not. Unless you had a couple shots of tequila. No, then, then, then maybe he looks a little better. Hey. But, it, yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're taking shots on the field. No. <laughs> I was just thinking about the yeah, never fat chick part. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> but, no, Alex Collins, if he's out there, they're going against Tennessee this week. Yeah. I, I would start him if I had to. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If I had Le'Veon Bell on my team and he's mm-hmm. on by and I needed a – I didn't trust anybody else on my bench. Yeah. I just started Alex Collins. Well, I'm going to tell you another guy, man, that, you know, since we're sticking with the running back theme, uh, and we talked about him last week as well, if I'm not mistaken, but Marlon Mack. Marlon, Marlon Mack, Mack, yeah. He's the best running back in Indy. Indeed. And, you know, he out-snapped Gore. So the changing of the guard is is happening. And that's another thing that, um, I, you know, I saw earlier before we uh, started taping. They're actually talking about shopping Gore. I don't know, though. I mean, who wants him? Well, maybe New York. Maybe. Maybe. It, it has to be a team that's pretty much established that they, you know, say, hey, we just got to take a shot in the dark. Or, you know, a one-year type mm-hmm. of deal. You know, I just can't see him going anywhere and starting. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be tough. Because, I mean, he, if it is, it's going to be for – I mean, you can't even see the Browns anymore because Isaiah Crowell actually looked yeah. – Decent for one he game. He did. He did. So, I don't know. I mean, Gore, I like Frank Gore. A lot yeah. of respect for Frank Gore. Oh, absolutely. But I don't want him. What about in Seattle? <laughs> There's <laughs> no way to block for him. <laughs> well, true. I mean, it don't matter. You could put Barry Sanders behind that line, and yeah. he ain't going nowhere because yeah. they are horrible. 
They are pretty bad. Russell's already on pace to break his total season pass attempts by like 100. Yeah. And it's only halfway through the season. I mean, he could totally blow that number out of the water. And as to Russell's credit, even at performance he had, you know, yesterday, man, that was phenomenal. Yep. But, yep, um, absolutely. But no, Marlon Mack, great talent. Yeah. Explosive. He's productive even with Gore playing. Mm-hmm. I mean, he still had a great game. I mean, it wasn't huge, yeah, but he was. had a decent game, had a touchdown. So mm-hmm. whoever did play him, yeah. you know, reaped the benefits of that. But Marlon Mack is he's a stud in the making. He is indeed. He's on the wrong team. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because they're too they're always behind. They can't run the ball too much. Yeah. But when we were talking about Seattle, it, it brings me to another uh, waiver wire gem that I think I think he's starting to come on, and that's Paul Richardson. You know, yesterday he had six targets, 105 yards, and two TDs. You know, again. He's the new Doug Baldwin. Yes. He's Doug Baldwin 2.0. Yeah, Doug Baldwin light. <laughs> yeah. Dougie but, light. Dougie, yeah, yeah, I like that. You like that? <laughs> but, yeah, man, I mean, you know, and um, they still have Lockett. He's kind of a deep threat. Pop you know. drop and Lockett. Pop drop him. Yeah. Exactly. I should have had that. I should have had that queued up. Man, that would have been awesome. It, it, it would have looked like we planned this. Next time. We, have, we don't plan anything, though. <laughs> no, we, we go with the flow. That's baby. right. But, um, yeah, I mean, that again, like we were talking about with Russell, having to really improvise a lot due to the fact of that line is just so putrid, man. It's it's horrible. Mm-hmm. But he has the skill to make it work. And also, Paul Richardson, you know, he's going to be that guy that's going to draw those, that secondary coverage. You know, Doug Baldwin is always going to have – you know, the top tier um, cornerback. So Paul Richardson, man, is beginning to slowly but surely become one of Russell's favorite targets. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Graham, I don't know where he is. He came back this week. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, consistently, yeah, he's – I mean, there's talks of shopping him. Exactly. I mean – I don't know where he would go either. Man, what if he went back to New Orleans? New Orleans. Wow. Fleener ain't cutting it. No. Saints look pretty good. They, yeah. Uh, All of a sudden, they've turned into an offense that likes to run the ball. <laughs> wow. Drew yeah. Brees winning winning games without even throwing touchdowns. Yeah, but it doesn't help fantasy uh, no owners that have him. No, me being one. Yeah, but, exactly. But yeah, um, yeah, I like Paul Richardson a lot, especially this week. You know, he has a pretty good matchup. Another guy I like uh, since we're sticking with the uh, wide receiver position. Since you're sticking with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not even getting a chance over here. Oh, whatever. I'm sorry. No, you keep going. No, it's all right. I'm just here to do the audio. Don't I'm worry. I'm going with the flow. I'm just the audio guy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you this last one just right Keep here. going. Just keep it. You're on a roll. <laughs> Jameson, James, Jameson Crowder. Crowder. I wanted to say it like a New Englander, but I scared I was going to mess it the up. The New England clam Crowder. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, man, I mean, you know, with Terrell Pryor and his absence. So to speak, Crowd is becoming the number one target, mm-hmm. really. And he's actually a lot of he's kind of available. Yeah. At the beginning of his season was so yeah. horrible. A lot of people just gave up on him and dropped him. Exactly. So if he's out there, now is the time to oh, yeah, yeah, grab definitely. quickly. If he is, he's probably not in a lot of leagues, but right. where he is. Yeah. Especially hurting. after this um this past week, you know, with 13 targets, if I'm not mistaken, I think he led the team, you know, and then uh, with 123 yards. So, uh, Kirk Cousins is running out of options. Yes. Especially with, you know, Vernon Davis is still there. You know, he's he's still being, you know, a decent. Jordan Reed. There he went. <laughs> yeah, I heard again. <laughs> hey. But, you know, so Jameson Crowder is, is picking up the slack where Pierre and um, – Deshaun left off, basically, mm-hmm. which we thought, again, that Terrell Pryor was going to be that guy. And we'll get to him later. Yeah, so disappointing. That's a lot of talent. Man. Just sitting is. there. Right. Wasted. And I don't even know why. Well, I don't know. From reports have been saying different things and how he came out and publicly uh, apologized to his teammates and everything. And I applaud mm-hmm. that. But, but you're still getting paid a lot of money to do a job. Exactly. Go catch the football. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know what I mean? This is something you're doing that we would love to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but again, I don't know. I, I'm not in his head, so I can't say. But when there's a mental issue as far as he's thinking about it or something is, is blocking his um, skill to play, mm-hmm. it might be an issue. Yeah. So, 
I'd stay away. Yeah, stay away for now. Yeah. Okay, do you got another one? Do you want me no, to throw one? No, I'm going to let you go now. <laughs> you can let me throw one in here? I'm going to let you go. There's somebody that, I don't know if I'd start him this week. He's supposed mm-hmm. to come back this week. He's been out for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Corey Davis, mm. wide receiver for the ti- the Tennessee Titans, comes back. Yeah. He's going to need a little bit of time to get worked back in. Yeah. But he is only, on average, 25% owned in leagues. Yeah. I mean, top talent coming out of the draft class. Mm-hmm. He's going to see a huge target share, especially if Delaney Walker can't play. Yep, yep. I mean, Corey Davis is one of those guys that you can pick up now, and he could possibly end up winning your league. Yeah. Second half of the season, he could be an absolute monster. And he's available. I mean, you can pick him up for nothing. Bag of Skittles. Maybe. God. Roll of duct tape. Hey. Some now and laters. Yeah. Whatever. Paper clips. <laughs> Whatever you got. I mean, you can go and just get Corey Davis. I yeah. mean, this is somebody who's, you know, preseason hype was off the charts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Week one, he looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Dealt with the hamstring in- injury again. They gave him extra time to heal it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Corey Davis has probably got to be one of the top you know, flyer guys out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's not going to be anybody else out there that has more potential than Corey Davis. No, no. And, I mean, you know, they drafted the guy in the first round for a reason. Yep. You know, um, a lot of people can talk about Eric Decker, um, you know, Matthews, whatever. Corey Davis is going to be that dude. Exactly. So, if you can get him now, you know, ahead of the curb, yeah, I'd do it. Yep. Yeah, especially because this week may not be – the right. greatest weeks to get him back in, and people mm-hmm. may kind of be kind of yeah eh, on him. Go grab him. Exactly. Grab him now. Get him early. That's right. All right, go ahead. I'll let you have another one. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to start off. This is a guy that has been in the uh, news here recently. Uh, a lot of more negative than positive. Uh, I hate to say it's one of my stiller, stiller players, one of the killer bees, uh, Mr. Martavis Bryant. And the reason why I bring him up is because – with Juju coming out and just playing phenomenal. He was all over that beat. <sighs> <That's> pretty- <laughs> he was Come- tap dancing on that beat. He- yeah. <laughs> wow. That was a good one. But, again, like you said, man, you know, he's a- he's showing that the-, the talent that he has. And, you know, the Steelers in a position, they don't really have to do anything right now. They could actually just leave him on the bench. Uh, do whatever, but my gut tells me that they are going to get rid of him because he's kind of, I don't want to say like a cancer, but anytime you got a player like that who's, you know, not satisfied with playing time, whatever the situation, you know, that can lead to dissension in, in the locker room. And they don't want, they, you know, they're trying to, they don't need any more of that. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's enough going on right now. And they got so much talent. So they don't want to take any chances. So this is just my hypotheses. Whew, hypothesize. Exactly. That they will probably try to trade him before the deadline to Which try is to get tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so quickly. Quickly. This actually might have already passed by the time you're watching this. Yeah. Or it could be the trade deadline today. We record this Monday night. Exactly. So if the trade deadline passes yeah. and he's not dealt, right. you probably don't need him. And just disregard what I <laughs> just, just said. Just, just disregard everything that we say. But if yes, if you pick him up and he's traded, what if he's traded to like a Patriots <sighs> or a Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah, exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. he's going to turn... He's going to have the opportunity to turn the whole entire season around. Yeah, and it, it was talks that the Pages were interested. Uh, I'd highly doubt that the Steeler organization would try to you know trade him within the uh, conference. Mm-hmm. But stranger things have happened. Yeah, so it's again, possible. It's possible. Definitely possible. Uh, one other guy, and it's really, really deep. <laughs> I mean, if you're <laughs> if you're really needing somebody to to come out. Mm-hmm. And it's really kind of a crapshoot right now. Yep. But I know the Jags were on a bye last week. Yep. That week before the bye, Leonard Fournette was out. Right. We thought it all was going to be Chris Ivory. Yeah. Oh. Is it Chris Ivory or is it all of a sudden TJ Yeldon? I mean, I'm and not- Yeldon came out and turned into a stud in his yeah. one opportunity. One of these guys, I kind of put both of them in the same category right this second as. Mm-hmm. The kind of the situations going on in Dallas. Yeah. With McFadden and Morris. Right. There's that pending Zeke suspension still out there. 
Yeah. And everybody's saying to go pick out, you know, Morris or McFadden. Mm-hmm. It's the same type of thing here. Yeah. If if Fournette misses time, you don't know which one. No. But if you have a spot, take a gamble and pick one, and hopefully you guess right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't sit here and tell you guys we have any insight to tell you that, oh, it's going to be Alfred Morris mm-hmm. and it's going to be TJ Yeldon. Right. Nobody knows. Nobody. But between those four guys, take a stab at one of them if you got them. Don't drop anybody who's producing on your team right now. No, exactly. But if you have somebody that is not worth it or mm-hmm. is just a flyer just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even a Matt Breida. We yeah. talked about Matt Breida, but it doesn't look like Hyde's going anywhere. Right, right. So if Hyde's not going anywhere, drop Breida. Yeah. Pick up one of these guys, cross your fingers, and see what happens. See, exactly. You never know. I mean, yeah, take a stab in the dark. I mean, it, but again, heck, who knows? It could be Rod Smith <laughs> in Dallas. I mean, we don't, you know. Emmett may come back. Emmett probably would do better than some of those guys. <laughs> No, but I mean, it, it is. It's kind of thin out there, but mm-hmm. you know, this is the time of year where you need to start taking. Yeah, it's getting taking cold. chances. Running backs are are, are going to be in high demand. We saw a lot of bad weather games this weekend. Yeah, exactly. That's only going to get worse. Yep. Teams got to run the ball. Exactly. You can't throw when it's snowing. You know, nah. like crazy. No. Nah. But oh well. That just that's just our advice. Hey. Stack up on running backs. Exactly. The more, the merrier. I agree. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get into a, a different segment here. We're going to do a keep trade cut segment. Okay. I'm going to name some names. Yep. You don't have to come off the top of your head with stats or whatever. Right. But I want to know if you keep these guys, trade them, and cut them, and a quick reason why. Gotcha. Terrell Pryor. Cut him. <laughs> it's not it's, even worth it. It's not even worth it. Right now, there's uh, so many other people out there Yeah. that are producing – Especially a wide receiver, it's so deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing nothing but causing you headaches. If if it was week four, okay, I'd say you hang on to him. You know what I mean? You know, we were rolling week nine. You know, the latter part of the season, he hasn't shown uh, the progression that's needed. You know, so yeah, I, I would just. What about beast mode, Marshawn Lynch? Whew. One more game than a bye week. Hmm. Here's here's my thinking on that. It's I would I would hold on to him if you could. Uh if you have the roster availability. If not, and if it's somebody else out there that we maybe spoke upon or somebody that um who wants Marshawn, then I, w- I would uh look to trade him. But was that an option to trade? Mm-hmm. Okay, keep, cool. Trade or cut. All right. Yeah, I I, I would keep him. At least Another week. Another week? Yeah, just to see. Either that or you got to use car salesman, that dude. Yeah. You got to talk up, oh, he's going to come back and he's going to help carry the team and they're struggling and he's going right. to put them on their back. Do whatever you got to do. <laughs> Which I'm hoping this week, you know, he may come back with, you know, just a vengeance. I mean, you know he was saying? abusing some high school kids. Yeah. <laughs> in his suspension. <laughs> he was out there practicing with a local high school. Right. And he wasn't just running drills. No, no, no. He, he was, was stiff arming. Yeah. <laughs> he was stiff arming 16 year olds. Yeah. I mean, but he looked good. Yeah, he looks bright. He's the best runs he had all year. Hey. It is what it is. What about Amir Abdullah? Cut. Not even worth it. Ain't even worth it. Man. Which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, he's got so much talent. But I think he spends too much time trying to look pretty in the backfield. Yeah. And yeah. juke and cut. Yeah. He just has no time to get anywhere. Yeah. I, I wasted talent. Man. Cut. Cut him. Tariq Cohen. I would hold on. I, I would give him one more week. I saw in the last game they, they tried to use him a little bit um, sparingly. See, here's the thing. Fox, I don't understand his philosophy. Fox doesn't understand Fox's philosophy. Exactly. like He's just winging it. You've got a talent that's so special. You know what I'm saying? Why not use him to keep the defense honest? But they don't do it. Mm-mm. So, but – Again, you know, he's a special talent. I would hate to drop him at this point because he, Fox, may get uh, aberration and it's like, oh, okay, maybe I should play this guy like he should be played. Give him one more week. Maybe the injury to Zach Miller opens up more targets in the passing game. Exactly. That That's, huh? that's maybe good analysis. That one just like popped it. in my head. That's, I didn't even plan to say that one. That was sharp. What about Sammy Watkins? <laughs> mm. I mean, I hate to say it. Um, I cut him. And see, this is where I'm only going to take a second on this because mm-hmm. you know we talk to people on Twitter all the time, and there was somebody asking. 
a bunch of fantasy professionals yep. what their opinion is on Sammy. Right. I, as part of our account, was the only person to tell him to cut him. Right. Everybody else is saying to, to keep Sammy, keep Sammy, keep Sammy. Mm-hmm. I think everybody's fixated on the talent and the name. Yes. He yes. hasn't done anything to... If that name was anybody else, mm-hmm. he would have been dropped weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. Weeks ago. People yeah. are only holding on to him because of his name. Right. His matchups don't get any easier. No. You don't need that. No. Cut him. Go get Corey Davis. Yeah. I'd rather have Corey Davis and Sammy Watkins rest of the year. Yeah. Hands down. Robbie Anderson, really. Yeah, yeah. He's getting more targets. Yeah. And he's probably available. I guarantee he's available. Yeah. He's on the Jets. Well, exactly. Everybody in the Jets is available except for maybe Bilal Powell and Matt Forte. Joe Namath might be available. He may be available. Check your waiver wire. <laughs> what? About, okay, you already mentioned Martavis. Yeah. So yeah. there's one other name that's been circulating. Mm-hmm. And it's a long shot. Right. But it's possible. Oh, I like this one. The return of Megatron. Whew. Calvin oh, Johnson. Uh, are talks of him coming back. There's man. talks of Jacksonville and Philly. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to see if he can get released from the Lions. Yep. To begin negotiating. Yeah. Eight weeks of Calvin Johnson could be pretty special. It could. In be. an offense like that. Yeah. It could also be a total train wreck. Yeah. It could I mean, be a publicity stunt. I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> I think I if mean, he comes back, he's going to oh, yeah. be there to produce. Right. I mean, with Philly, him on one side and Alshon on the other with Aguilar in the slot. You can't. I mean, if it happens, he's one of those talents that you got to take a chance on. You know what I mean? It, it's just you, you, you can't. Uh, kind of like Josh play. Gordon. Exactly. I was going to allude to that. But, you know, but again, yeah, Josh Gordon, and which I – you know how I feel about Flash. I think he's going to come back. Pretty sure you got a man crush for that guy. Almost, man. A I fantasy mean, crush. Exactly. Let's preference that now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, those two guys have such talent. And I haven't seen any film or any anything on uh, Megatron right now. But I have seen a lot on Josh. He's training. He's ready. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he came out with that piece, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, you know, just, you know, bearing his soul about the situation. But here's the thing, man. I, the dude can play. Mm-hmm. Ain't no your fans or butts about it. And if a lot of people, you know, their memory might not be as recent, you know. But if you go back and look at preseason 2016, you know, he had a few games that he showed his flashes of, of greatness. So it's one of those guys you just got to keep, an eye, you know, keep an eye out for. Mm-hmm. If you got huge rosters. Yeah. And you're just – Rostering people because hey. maybe Josh Gordon. You could have like the all 20, 2014 team. Hey. You'd have some two number ones of 2014. Yes. Pick up Peterson while you're at it. Exactly. <laughs> You'd have the greatest <laughs> lineup of 2014 ever. Man. Uh, yeah, that's that's a chance. You got to take it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if don't, like I said, don't drop somebody who's producing. But if no. you got somebody sitting there that's just wasting space, yeah. You go buy a lottery ticket, don't you? Yeah. Or scratch your ticket. Exactly. You play Powerball, it's the same thing, So it's the fantasy version. Exactly. What else are you going to do? All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us week nine, Waiver Wire. Uh, still appreciate all the love. Oh, yeah. Inboxes, Gmail's blowing up, Twitter's blowing up. Yeah, man. YouTube is blowing up. I mean, we've gone from zero to over 700 subs here in the last few weeks. Yeah. I mean, it's huge, and we love it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing, absolutely. We, yeah. we appreciate all you guys' love. Make sure you're hitting the like button. Yeah. Likes help us out. Yes, if indeed. you want to make any questions, comments, concerns, yeah. topics, anything, mm-hmm. you want to talk about the weather, hit us up. Go look on last week's videos. We answered every single comment, even the bad ones yes, we indeed. answered. Yeah. Every, every bit of them. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Like I said, make sure you check us out all week. Coming at you here pretty soon with our start sits. Yep. And uh, we'll get you all set up, ready to go for week nine. Sound good? You guys have a good rest of your week. Peace. Thanks.